Hi, in this video we are going to generate a Mandelbrot set on Commodore 64 using a C programming language. But before we do that, I would like to say thank you to all my subscribers for supporting my work. And at this point there is more than 500 of you out there, so thank you very much. I never thought that I would reach this number, but here I am. Uh, also, I would like to thank everyone who watched and commented my videos. Um, in general, I receive very positive comments and I'm very much impressed by the way that retro community received me here on YouTube. Uh, and not only me, but also other uh, small retro YouTube channels that uh, just starting the journey. So everyone here is so supportive. So once again, uh, thank you, thank you all. Um, now, let's continue with the Menderbrot set. Okay, Mandelbrot set. So I'm pretty sure that you already know what the Mandelbrot set is, but nevertheless, I will try to explain it in a quick and simple way. So first of all, Mandelbrot set is a fractal. And to generate this fractal, we need to use quadratic polynomial. And this, this, that is this equation right here. And it looks quite simple one, right? So where is the problem? So the problem is that this equation is, um, we need to um, do iteration. So this equation is the one that feeds into itself. So we starting from z equals zero, and then we square it and we add um, some constant. And then for next iteration, we take this that result and then we square it we add the constant and so on and so on so we are feeding the result of the equation into itself so the problem here is that this c is not simple number it's actually a complex number and these complex numbers are um have two parts so one part is a real number and the second one is imaginary number and what we are trying to do here if we want to plot some area then we need to iterate for, for each point in this area and we need to calculate how fast will this point diverge to infinity when we feed it through this equation right so and we need to count the steps um, how many steps, how many iterations do, does it, this point needs to start diverging to infinity and we need to color it accordingly so that means that we need to apply some color palette you know, black is diverging really fast the red is diverging after I don't know how many number of iterations and so on and so on so, you know, some kind of <clears throat> system, right? so if we try to apply this to Commodore 64, large number of iterations, complex numbers, and um, you know, nice color palette so that we can paint our high resolution image. Yeah, I don't think so. So you can kind of see already that we will have some limitations here on Commodore 64. Uh, but luckily for us, there is a code that will help us and it's right here on the on wikipedia page that's the reason why we're here at, for, at the first place so let me just find it just one second please it's all the way down here somewhere oh here it is okay so this is pseudocode and this code is um can be used on a systems that doesn't support complex numbers so um, systems that doesn't have this complex that data type right and Commodore 64 does not support um, complex numbers so this code is perfect for us and we are going to transfer this first in basic and we will try to generate Mandelbrot set in basic and then we are going to do the same thing in C programming language and we will try to we will see what differences are between those two languages um, which one is better, which one is faster, and which one is uh, easier to do. So, let's start. 
Okay, so here's our code transferred from Wikipedia page to Commodore Basic. And as you can see, it's not very big, it fits on a single page. Uh, but let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better and we will go line by line. Um, so on line number 10, uh, we are just clearing the screen, nothing, nothing special there. Um, these two lines, uh, there are four, two for loops. We are iterating through whole screen on Commodore 64. That means 25 rows and 40 columns. And we need to check every, every location. And then these two lines, lines number 120 and 130 are here so that we can create offset from mathematical area or Mendelbrot set mathematical area to area um, on Commodore 64. Because what we have on 64 is uh, positions from um, 0 to 25 and 0 to 40. But uh, area that you want to plot, Mandelbrot area that we want to plot is actually located mathematically at position minus 3.5 uh, to 1 and minus 1 to 1. So that means that we need to create some kind of um, algorithm to offset uh, each, each coordinate, each position to, to corresponding position on the Commodore 64 screen. And these two lines do exactly that. So, and then we have... Uh, main loop and that's this uh, for loop here and as you can see it's kind of cleverly um, chosen to have these 16 steps so that it, it can fit our color palette perfectly on Commodore 64 and as you can see uh, this step minus one what we actually did with this is just invert our color palette so that means that the, the that we are starting not from the beginning of the palette but from the end and we are going in opposite direction so the last color is black right and then we are checking this if statement if um, this uh, if statement is true that means that our uh, current um, iteration current position y i is uh, going out of our area so it's diverging to infinity and at this point we need to stop iterating and we need to go one step back to our previous valid position a uh, valid um, iter iteration so that means that when we exit this uh, for loop and going to line number 215 that we are actually just adding one to our i variable okay and then we are just poking that on the screen so that means that uh, we are currently poking uh, petsky character 160 and that is inverted space so it's just square and then we are poking at the color um, position in the memory and we are po poking um, variable i so we are poking that color basically coloring location on the screen right and because we are using the whole screen we are just keep iterating um, and our p variable is just continue plus one plus one and plus one so we are going and filling the, the whole screen um, and then at the end what we have here is this infinite go to loop it's here just because to avoid once we plot the Mandelbrot set that we don't get that ready statement and broke the screen we are just waiting infinitely until we stop the, the execution of the program itself so that's it nothing special okay so let's test this on um, Commodore 64 let's list the code oh look fits on the screen on Commodore as well yeah okay let's run it and here we go now at this point all we need to do is be patient because this will take a while Hey, we are done. 
Okay, this is it. This is our Mandelbrot set plotted on Commodore 64. And as you can see, I'm not much of a high resolution here, but nevertheless, it is proper Mandelbrot set. Um, and just let me get out of the execution. So um, this is it. This is uh, how it's done in basic. And as you can see, it's painfully slow. It's terribly slow. Um, this is the reason why we will try to do this in C programming language, because in C we can be much faster there. Iteration should be much, much uh, at higher speed. But there is a problem. There's caveat, of course. Okay, if you notice here in this uh, for loop and even before when we are doing this offset for coordinates, we are dealing with the floating point numbers. And um, we do all these mathematical operations here and we deal with the floating point numbers. And the basic is doing this natively. It's do, we don't even think about it. this. Uh, I didn't even mention, mention it when we... Uh, when, when I describe this for loop, you, you know, it's quite normal. The problem is that we don't have the floating point, point support in the C for Commodore 64, at least not in CC65 compiler. So that means that uh, we can gain some speed um, in C uh, for the iterations, but then again, we are lacking the mathematical floating point operations and that's that's one more challenge to overcome so that's the next step that we are going to take a look and try to try to solve okay so this is our our Mandelbrot set written in the C programming language and as you can see uh, there is not much of code here either but like I mentioned before we are lacking our floating point support here uh, but uh, if I zoom in, you can notice that I have these two header files included into our program. And thanks to Mr. Um, Bob Andrews, uh, who let me switch to this. Okay, so Mr. Bob Andrews wrote this library to give us kind of support for floating point number in the CC65 compiler. Um, the, the way that he made this uh, is using um, existing kernel routines and basic routines to um, create this library. So you can imagine that it's not the fastest thing in the world. And also the Bob itself says that this is just temporary solution until someone writes completely as, as it should be written um, but ne nevertheless it does work the only thing that you have to uh, when you use it it does have a little bit different approach you cannot use uh, mathematical operations natively uh, everything has to go through um, functions or better say macros so you will see in the code what I what I mean by that. But nevertheless, Mr. Bob make um, hell of a thing, <laughs> hell of a easy for us to do this in the C programming language. So let's try to switch back to the code. Okay, so we are included um, our new floating point library into our C uh, program, and we. Uh, have some constant variables defined and then this is the main um, the main function that um, iterates for each position on the screen uh, is calculating um, a Mandelbrot number and gets the Mandelbrot um, color and um, as you can see we have this macros um, used instead of native mathematical operations so that means that this i to f means integer to float so you are converting this um, x position to floating point and then we are multi multiplying we, ne we need to use this macro again and we are multiplying that number which is now float to uh, some variable aa and then so on so this uh, for example this one we are uh, converting um, variable columns to floating point and then we are dividing these two numbers g1 and this one 
and so on and so on so it, you, you get the picture right so you have to use macros for every mathematical operations and then essentially we are doing exactly the same uh, for loop as before in basic um, the only difference is uh, again we cannot uh, natively compare uh, these two floating point numbers um, directly we need to use the macro again to make a comparison and then in case that we have a true result um, then we break out of the function and then we return i minus one so the previous color and you can see that uh, in this example i didn't invert this for loop I am inverting colors, but I will do this in a little bit different way. So this is just normal loop that goes from 0 to 15, 15 being the last color in the color palette for Commodore 64. And this is the, our main um, uh, function that actually generates Mandelbrot set. And here are the main uh, two for loops that goes through each row and each column. And then we just call this um, loop color array uh, function that's this one here and once we get this color now we are in, uh, inverting our color palette using this approach so we are just uh, whatever color that we get we uh, subtract that from number 15 and then again we are poking uh, character number 160 that's inverted space uh, to our screen location and then uh, we are poking of course um, color location um, variable c exactly the same thing that we did in basic and then again um, this is where we prepare uh, some of the co constant that we are going to use uh, during the execution so for example uh, we need this 3.5 like a floating point number right so we are going to store that in variable aa and this variable AA is defined as a float. So you can see we have a floating point um, variable. Uh, but to get, you, you cannot do um, this. AA is equal to 0.5. Okay. Uh, if we try to compile this, it, it will not work. <clears throat> what we need to do is use uh, number 35 we convert it to float and then we use number 10 convert it to float and then we divide those two numbers and the result of this mathematical operation is um, 3.5 and that's the same uh, concept how we create um, 2.5 and this is um, of course 2.0 this is um, 1.0 and this is number 4.0 right so the floating points and we cannot do this okay so this is it this is the whole thing uh let me let me uh, compile this and uh, run it and we can see uh, what it does okay uh now we need to build this um and test it of course and to build it in cc65 we need to execute this command and this uh, part of it we need to include this uh, runtime library and this library is in fact our floating point um, library from um, mr bob andrews and to do to build this library we need to go through several steps it's not very difficult but you know Okay, what we need to do is, of course, is get this um, download to our computer. So we need to pull the git or we need to um, download it manually, whatever is the case. And now let me switch to... Okay, so this is what we have. And what we need to do is um, we have a make file. Everything is prepared. All we need to do is execute this make file and as a result we are going to generate this runtime.lib file and we need to include that into our build that's the whole thing okay so now we are in a terminal and what we will do here is just run 
make file and then we are going to call this runtime.lib and when we hit it make its update okay let's uh, let's delete this um, and start over okay this is it this is all what it takes to build this library and when we list this um, here it is okay nice and now we can um, proceed with our build here which is just beautiful and to build this uh, we need here this and then what we need to do is i need to switch to different terminal just one moment please ah here we are okay and here we will execute this command okay this is all we have a little bit of warning but no, never mind and we have our program built beautiful now let's test this let's switch to this screen ah, here we go very nice here we go we are generating Mandelbrot set in C and as you can see it's much faster than um, in basic of course yeah but still not fast enough <laughs> you need to wait nevertheless yeah too much iterations I guess Here you go, you are done, and again, very beautiful Mandelbrot set plotted on the screen, real nice. Okay, this is it, uh, I will put uh, all the links into the description of this video, so all the source files, um, this float, floating point library, um, everything, the way, the, how to build it, the way to set up environment and everything else will be in description of this video, so if you're interested you can take a look there but <clears throat> this is not the end of our adventure because there is plenty more thing to do once we made it um, compile once we know that we are generating Mandelbrot set now we can play with uh, Petsky characters and generate some cool effects here so let's try to do that so here we are in C code again and what we are going to change so instead of just uh, poking always the same character that's 160 uh, we will poke 80 plus C so we are going to poke um, Petsky characters starting from uh, Petsky number 80 and then we, are, we will add C variable and it is our color so that means that not only the color will be different, but for every color it will be different Petsky character printed on the screen. So let's try to compile this and see um, how will this look like. Here you go. You're okay. done? Looks weird. <laughs> Okay, we'll try one more time. Uh, let me go back to code and try to start from beginning of our Petsky table. But not beginning, we're going to skip uh, add character. Mm, but... Okay, let me speed this up. Okay, we are done. Uh, so, uh, this example is um, my favorite one because uh, if you focus your eyes on this uh, black uh, A letter, right, on this Petsky A character, um, you will kind of get the effect that 
this uh, black area is a little bit behind so you get some kind of 3d effect um, almost 3d effect so it's quite interesting um, little piece of art on commodore 64 at least to me i don't know about you but you know i get fascinated by this because you know playing with the colors and everything and you know you get we are not even in any kind of resolution here this is just pesky characters and we get this cool effect you know cool real real cool so what i plan to do next is um you know use a little bit different combination of pesky characters maybe tweak around with the colors a little bit and try to generate uh, different images uh, mandelbrot uh, set images on Commodore 64 and you know animated somehow to create some sort of demo and um, I hope that you I really hope that you enjoyed this video uh, this is all that I have for you today and if you did please hit the like button and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one and until then goodbye